Yes, we can see the slide. Thank you very much. I'm Makoto Tsuchiya. It's my great honor to be here in this very important conference. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. And also, thank you very much, Tamasa and Takashi. Today, I'm focusing on two topics. First, what kind of gifts we are getting from coral reefs? Excuse me. And second, what shall we give in return to coral reefs? As you know, when we get some gift from your friends, it's quite usual to send in return. I would like to discuss these points in relation to the resilience of coral reefs. <clears throat> Recently, the term of ecosystem services became so popular, which are defined as direct and indirect contributions of ecosystems to human well-being. And ecosystem services have an impact on our survival and quality of life. <clears throat> and as you know, there are four types of ecosystem services. They are provisioning service, regulating service, cultural service, and supporting service. As far as I know, the term of ecosystem service was originally shown in the book entitled Extinction, the causes and the consequences of disappearance of species, which were written by Paul and Anne Eric of Stanford University in 1981. This is a cover of this book. <clears throat> we have several points for discussion today. We have to discuss about the capacity of coral reefs to supply ecosystem services. And of course, uh, today's most important topic is resilience of coral reefs. And we, namely scientists, researchers, have to discuss from our own field, of course. And I would like to emphasize the importance of ecosystem connectivity and integrated coastal management, of course, including coral reefs. And finally, uh, I would like to show the importance of payment for ecosystem services. <clears throat> we are getting uh, so many <clears throat> gifts from coral reefs, namely fish, crustaceans, seaweeds, and so on. Coral reefs is very small in the world. Although the area of coral reef is less than 0.5% of total ocean on the earth, but reef related fish catch was estimated to be nine to 12% of world's total fisheries. It's very high. So this clearly shows the importance of coral reefs for our lives. Once we have estimated the value of coral reefs like this in the middle of this slide, using the fish catch and aquaculture production is a very large amount of money we are getting from reefs. <clears throat> and also we are trying to get the use for medical substances from seaweeds, sponges, soft corals, and so on. Also, we are collect collecting some beautiful or pretty fish for aquaculture exhibition. <coughs> Aquarium, sorry, aquarium exhibition. In many souvenir shops in tropical or subtropical countries, or even in temperate region, it's very common to find many <coughs> shellfish collected from coral reefs and adjacent waters. When we are looking at this kind of photo, however, we are very anxious whether we have collected too many shellfish from the reef. 
we worry about the drying up these resources very soon. Resources should be constant for a long, long time to get their ecosystem services. <clears throat> Here, you can see an example of the change in fish catch in the coastal uh, coral reef area in Okinawa, southern Japan. Some fish species and lobster <clears throat> showed the relatively constant catch during the last 40 years, but in the bottom you can see octopus and <clears throat> cattlefish showed the different trend. So we have to discuss why we could get a large number of cattlefish or octopus uh, many, many years ago, and why it suddenly decreased. <clears throat> Coral reefs are target for our recreation, like uh, snorkeling and diving. But for them, beautiful coral reefs should be healthy. Namely, uh, colorful fish are swimming among beautiful corals. <clears throat> Sometimes we have tried to evaluate the coral reefs in economical fields. First, I'm showing the result of social and cultural services. In Australia or in Caribbean, even in Okinawa, we have some information on the recreational values, which were calculated using the travel cost or uh, some money used for tourism. The amount of money was very, very high in every country. And also, coral reefs were used for many cultural and religious activities. <clears throat> but, but, Sometimes we have used these beautiful coral reefs for unsustainable, namely destructive use, reclamation for something, or we are building, <coughs> we are collecting some rocks or <coughs> sand from the reef. In Okinawa, this kind of photo is usual. We, we have collected some rocks from coral reef, but fortunately, this activity was completely inhibited now. In Maldives, coral blocks, rubbles, and sand, large amount of coral blocks and sand were mined like this. Yeah, exploita exploitation of resources is quite unsustainable. But we have to use something from coral reefs. So point is, how can we discuss the balance between them? <clears throat> this is an aerial view of an airport, which was opened in 1988. <clears throat> you can see the airport was constructed, constructed on coral reef. Namely, it's very difficult to get ecosystem services from this coral reef. And of course, we are able to get a lot of services from this new airport. So again, I can say, no, I have to say, how can we discuss the balance between the development and nature conservation? <clears throat> Structural services are also important. Coral reefs are natural breakwater. When you are looking at this, <clears throat> this kind of photo, it's very <clears throat> reasonable to understand this service. So we can calculate the cost of artificial reef when we would like to construct an uh, artificial reef instead of this natural reef, how much we need. Some of my colleagues calculated 
at this point, for constructing one meter of artificial reef, we have to prepare one to three million Japanese yen. It's quite high. We can calculate how much we need <coughs> to get a very long artificial reef constructed by concrete. Okay, now I will move to the next topic, which is from viewpoint of biology. Sea cucumbers are very popular <coughs> members in coral reef. Beautiful landscape of coral reef is maintained by healthy biological activities particularly by feeding activities by benthic animals. This is an example. Sea cucumbers are feeding on fine particles on the bottom surface and produce their feces again on the surface. During the feeding process, the amount of organic materials in the sediment is reduced and bottom surface is purified. Uh, this is the feeding of sea cucumber. <coughs> For example, we have measured the amount of organic materials in sediment. 10.6 milligrams of carbon in the sediment was <clears throat> eaten by sea cucumber and produced as fishes in which 2.5 milligrams of carbon was detected. Clearly showing the <clears throat> decrease in the organic materials. All benthic animals are feeding something. So during this feeding <clears throat> processes, benthic animals are contributing the purification of basic environment. Also, we know the process of filter feeders. Two beakers were prepared. In both of them, unicellular green algae were cultured. And in one of them, I put one filter feeder, uh, one filter feeding bivalve, right one. One hour later, water was completely purified by the feeding, filter feeding of bivalve. And on position of organic materials were changed from water column to the gut of bivalve and bottom of the beaker. They are fishes. <coughs> In coral reefs, this kind of oysters are very common. So all filter feeding bivalves are showing similar contribution to purify the organic materials in the water column. Beautiful sandy beach in coral reefs also shows the purification activity through the tidal regime. <coughs> Suspended materials in the water column are percolated into the beach at high tides and filtered by sandy particles. Finally, they are purified. Clear water is seeping out from the beach at low tide. I'm showing one example for the measurement. We have measured, <coughs> measured the several parameters like this. At high tide, the water percolating into sandy beach showed these values. And next, we collected the water seeping out from the beach, which showed these values. For example, <coughs> COD showed the, this kind of change, 2.3 <coughs> ppm to 1.7 ppm. As you know, COD is one of the parameters of organic materials. 
the organic materials, the amount of organic materials was reduced by the filtration system of sandy beach like this. Instead, you can see the different trend for in organic materials, NO3 or <coughs> dissolved carbon. For example, <coughs> NO3 increased, namely from 0 0.05 to 0 0.72. This means that organic materials are decomposed by bacteria or <coughs> other microorganisms in the beach. And in organic materials are produced in the beach and seeping out, seeped, seep out to the coral reef waters. So this is the purification system of sandy beach. In total, there are many <coughs> contributors for purifying the coral reef waters in different ways. <coughs> coral reef is not lonely. Coral reef has many friends. So we have to discuss about the connectivity of some ecosystems. Some coral reef organisms migrate back and forth between adjacent ecosystems such as mangroves, tidal flood, and open water. In such case, also we can discuss about the effect of nutrient and organic materials in this connectivity processes. The role of mucus produced by corals is important. This is a view at low tide on Okinawan Reef. Coral species is now producing mucus, which is containing some amount of protein, lipid, and so on. This mucus is <coughs> scraped off by wave action and transport it to reef system. And bacteria are <coughs> growing on these mucus, and also mucus is trapping a large number of diatoms. This is an <coughs> electron micrograph of mucus, on which you can see a large number of diatoms. Corals are supporting many animals using these mucus. These mucus are depositing on the bottom surface or floating on the water column. They are eaten by fish and basic animals. Also, when they are transported to open water, they are supporting the open water ecosystem. What shall we give in return against their gifts, not only to coral reefs, but also to whole nature? It is a discussion on payment for ecosystem services, or sometimes we can say as payment for environmental services. Answer is simple. Preparing comfortable habitat for coral reef organisms. <clears throat> Recently, SDGs are very, very popular. We can find out several answers in SDGs. As you know, there are 17 goals like this. But today, we are <coughs> focusing only on <clears throat> 14 which is discussing about life below waters. And important point is the target. Under these 17 goals, there are 169 targets. It's more precise. <clears throat> but as far as I know, <clears throat> in Japan, detailed explanation of each target 
is not enough. Usually, teachers and or commentators explained their summary only. However, it's very important and useful to learn each target. If these targets are exp explained very well in your countries, we have to learn the teaching idea from you. This is SDG 14. In this <coughs> goal, we have several ideas for the restoration of coral reefs. We have to reduce all kinds of marine pollution, or we have to <coughs> control the fishing processes. Okay, I will explain some of them. Sorry, this is a very small character. This is the target of goal 14, from 14, 1 to 47, and 40A, 40B, and 40C, 14C. I will try to explain these three, three targets. <clears throat> this is 14.2. By 2030, sustainably, we have to manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystems to avoid significant adverse impacts. Yeah, but very important. In the next step, we have to discuss how can we make an our action. Action, action is more important. <clears throat> In 14.4, again, <clears throat> important description is made like this. It's related to the harvesting or fisheries. We have to regulate harvesting and we have to end overfishing and illegal fishing. Of course, destructive fishing practice. We have to implement so science-based management plans. So this is a role uh, of scientists, our researchers. We cannot survive without fish. Again, I have to say, what is the balance between our demands and fish supply. The third one is 14.5. We have to conserve at least 10% of coastal and marine areas, consistent with national and international law. It is easy or not. I think it's difficult discussion. But is this enough? or not? How can we get scientific information? We have to conduct our research very, very intensively. It's difficult to wait for the accumulation of scientific information. So in such case, we have to learn this idea first. Until now, the coral reefs are affected in various ways resulting in the decrease in species richness and their abundance. Decrease in fish size appeared, and also the beauty, beautiful landscapes were <coughs> reduced. And unfortunately, <coughs> we had a decrease in value as a touristic site by various reasons, coral bleaching, uh, fine particles inflow from territorial areas and um, a predation. This is a uh, famous figure published by IPCC many years ago. This shows the change in the air temperature from 700 until now. So air temperature was relatively constant during this 1,000 and several hundred years. But as you know, <clears throat> after the Industrial Revolution, air temperatures 
Yeah, temperature is increase, increasing suddenly, which is affecting coral reefs. So, party agreement or current discussion in Glasgow, uh, COP26, our target is to limit the global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to, <coughs> compared to the pre-industrial levels. How do you think this value? Look at this one. In 1998, mass coral bleaching occurred in world scale. When the temperature was a little bit higher than that of industrial revolution period, less than 1.5. So 1.5 is 5 degrees Celsius is enough or not? From the <coughs> coral reef science, we have to keep the lower temperature for our <coughs> healthy coral reefs. For that, we have to discuss the payment for ecosystem services to make the comfortable coral reefs for inhabitants, or well, of course, for us. If our activities are very good, we can get higher species richness and abundance in coral reefs, and fish size is also increasing. We can get beautiful landscapes again, and touristic values are also increasing. Now <clears throat> we are approaching the final slide. We have been pursuing the convenience, which affect the Earth's environment, unfortunately, and unfortunately we get got the bad environment, environmental degradation occurred toward the beautiful and productive coral reefs with excellent management. So probably we have to do something. In my opinion, it's a time for patience. We have to save electricity. We have to check in, in air conditioner. We have to use it at lower temperature. Lighting, so also, we have to save water. We have to avoid waste. We have many things to do to pay our effort to not only coral reefs, but all nature. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Coral reefs are waiting for your very good idea and action. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tsuchiya. Uh, it was very comprehensive and uh, very in, uh, important messages to have a coexistence with uh, nature. And